In today's video, we're going to be drawing a traditional Japanese style phoenix. Welcome back everyone, I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, welcome back to the channel and back to a brand new video. So like I said, in today's video, we're drawing a traditional Japanese style phoenix. So without further ado, let's go to the overhead. Alright guys, welcome back to the table. So in today's video, we're starting off with an A4 piece of sketch paper. Well, it's actually A3 and I've just folded it in half. I've also got a mechanical pencil for our sketch and an eraser in case we make any mistakes and we need to erase them. So, jumping straight into this one, it's going to be very similar to the Japanese style crane video I did a few weeks back, if you are familiar with the channel. I'm going to leave that in the link in the description down below because there are some similar aspects to this. But just to start this one off, we're going to go ahead and draw in an oval or an egg shape. Just like that. Coming forward from this, you're just going to add a bit of a center line to it. Okay, now coming down to the bottom of this, you're going to sweep it off. And you're going to loop back around. Like this. And at the end of this, you're just going to put another little oval shape. And that's going to be the neck and the head of our phoenix here. Okay, from here, just dropping in the shape for some wings. These are going to be very similar to our crane wings. You're basically going to come up to the shoulder area here. And you're going to drop out and do a little curve line like that. You're going to cut across this uh, curve section here with a semicircle like this or a curved line like that. Just above this, you're going to do two curved lines coming in from either side. They're going to intersect in that middle section there. You're going to come to the tip of your line here, drop it back towards the center, and then coming from our main sort of section of the body, you're going to do a curved line that links and intersects uh, with the center point of that as well. And that's going to give you the shape for your wing, or at least the foundation shape for your wing. You're going to go ahead and do this on the other side as well. Alright, once you've done this, we're going to drop in the placement for our feet. So I'm just going to drop down a little curved line like this. And I'll double up on that line. And I'll draw a little ball at the end. Coming off of this, we're just going to draw in our toes, which are like wavy W lines with little balls at the end of them. So these are going to be similar to the eagle claws that we've done in previous video as well. Just like that. The other claw I'm going to have resting up against the neck here. So just a little circle shape. And then we'll add in our little W shapes with the balls on the ends of them for the other claws, just like this. Coming up to add in space for our tail. We're going to start this off similar to our crane. Just dropping in these sort of uh, leaf shapes, these big leaf shapes down either side, like this. There's going to be some feathering on the side here, so you can just put in a little curve for that. And then for the big tail feathers, you're basically going to do a long S curve. And at the end of this, a teardrop sort of shape like that. And these can flow in whatever direction you want them to, and they can be as short or as long as you would like to make them. So I'm just going to throw in a couple of them here where I want them to sit, or at least where I think I want them to go for now. In between these, you can just put in these little lines flowing in whatever direction you would like. And they're going to be some smaller sort of secondary feathers of the tail. So there. just underneath the oval that we did, we're going to come down with a line that curves along with our first line there. And that's gonna come back and just up into the shoulder of your bird here. Just going onto the back of the uh, body there. The other one's gonna start here, come around. It's gonna get a little bit wider. And that's gonna come all the way around and link up underneath our wing. So I like to just cut a line across from sort of that area where the neck started and drop in a little almond shape, which will give us a good sort of shape for our eye. You can do a little circle on the inside of this and a dot in the center for a pupil. Now we're gonna follow that shape out, that line out like this. We'll overlap the body a little bit if you'd like. And then starting just at the back of the eye here, 
We're going to do a line that angles upward and intersects with that line at some point. So if they were to continue, they would cross over each other. To join the bottom part of the B cup, you can bring a line down beneath the eye, curve around the back of the beak, curve forward to the front of the mouth there, and then bring it up into the bottom of the beak. So this gives you the full beak shape. You can go ahead and add a little nostril as well to the top of this if you would like. From here, you're gonna bring a line that goes up and around the eye. And it's just gonna flick back like this. You can put in a few little flicky feather lines just like that. The bottom of this can just connect up with the neck for now. Okay, a couple of little bits of detail with the head. We're gonna add a little crest to this. You're just gonna come off from the front area of the head and bring a line that curls forward like this and add a little bit of a M shape to the end of this. And then you're gonna do these little overlapping curve lines, getting a little bit wider towards the actual head. Now you can do this in a lot of different ways, but this is just like a little crest feather that comes off the top of the head, curls around and forward. And of course, if you wanted to, you could add a few feathers behind this. So you can get as decorative as you'd like with doing this part of the design. Just at the bottom of the face here, I'll add a few more little wispy feathers. These are just little overlapping lines that join up the bottom part of the head into the neck there. Okay, coming down to the neck of our bird here, we're just adding a couple of details. So starting at about eye level here, just coming out around, following the shape and then tapering down to this sort of point here. And on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing, just coming around and tapering down onto the bottom sort of section where it'll go underneath the body there. From here, you can go ahead and add these little curve lines to it. It'll be very similar to how you do the belly on a dragon or the belly on a snake. So I'm just gonna do like a long scale shape and join the center. Start from the center and join to center and then reverse it. And you can just do that down one side of the neck drawing in this sort of scale feather pattern. And then you can come around and do that up your body. Now before starting your feather pattern on the body, I'd recommend adding in the sort of uh, spinal feathers or the area where you've got a bit of scaling. So just coming down from the back of the neck, tracing a line around, up onto the back of your bird and over like this. And you can go ahead and add these little plates to it that are basically like almond shapes that overlap with themselves, okay? From here, it's a pretty simple matter to go ahead and draw in those uh, additional feathers by just dropping them in and then following the pattern that we did to draw them. And they are gonna get a little bit wider as the body gets bigger as well. Now would be a really good time for us to take a look at some class notes regarding this design. Okay, so in looking at class notes for this one, there's not gonna to be too many differences with the wings. They're pretty much exactly the same as how you would do the crane wings that we did last time. The only difference is you might add a little bit of a point to the end of these feathers. So these are the wings from the crane tutorial. You're basically going to add a little point to the end of some of these feathers. It's not completely necessary, it depends how you want this to look, but adding that little point can make it look a little bit more aggressive and maybe give it a little bit more of that fiery phoenix sort of look. And in terms of doing the tail feathers, there is gonna be a slight difference. You're essentially going to drop in these little peaks into the inside of your feathers to give them a little bit more uh, detail and depth. It's, it's not completely necessary. You can leave them exactly like the crane feathers, although I like to add a little bit more detail when I'm doing these phoenixes. Now, actual notes regarding the phoenix, we're looking at the tail feathers, specifically the longest uh, tail feathers there. So what you're going to do for these is draw in a long S curve or whatever shape you'd like, adding like a teardrop at the end. To start adding detail to this, you're going to basically double or triple up on your teardrop shape on the inside of there. There's many other things you could do. You could put an eye on the inside of there. You could put little flames on the inside of there. It depends how you want this to look. I like to add a large oval as a good sort of guideline. And then you can add these two lines on either side of it to sort of help you out. From here, essentially what you're gonna do is start 
in whichever direction your teardrop is facing. And you're going to bring back from a point, these two curved lines like this. And then you can come out with these little peaks. Okay, from both sides, you can do these little S-curve style peaks. Now on the side that's actually facing you or is uh, more to the front of your image, you can put in these uh, sort of peaks and you know parts of the feathers that actually come out and look a little bit messy by overlapping these lines. On the other side, it's gonna be sort of folded around itself. So you won't really see too much of those wispy bits that come out. You're just going to have a lot of these uh, overlapping shapes like this. And that will give it this sort of uh, long feather look. It's going to look a lot like a peacock feather. And that's sort of what we're going for. These Japanese phoenixes have a very sort of peacock-esque look to them. You can double up on that center vein a little bit if you would like also. In terms of doing the smaller sort of secondary feathers, it's going to be very similar. I'm just not going to do the big eye in the middle. And I'm going to cut down detail a little bit for these side areas. So just coming around and I'll make them a little bit more smooth by adding a little less variance to I'd them. I'd just like to take a quick moment to mention that this week's class notes comes in the form of a full sketch and a broken down sketch. So you'll get my full sketch with the line work and then a broken down version of that. It'll be in the class notes folder of your YouTube membership. So once you've applied the techniques that we did during that little class notes session, you'll have the wings and the tail finished. And the last thing to do before we transfer this to some watercolor paper is the We're going to drop down on top of our little circle here. We're going to dip in and around, just following our shapes. You're going to add a little curve line in at the front here for a talon. You're going to come around and sort of nearly complete that little circle. And then a little W curve and another little curve just to join that back into the foot there. Coming down on the line behind this following our W shape, bring it around this time, no talon, a little W shape to connect it back up and then add your talon in afterwards because we're seeing sort of the other angle of the toe there. For the back claw here, again, you're just following your curves around, adding your talon in, bringing that circle around adding in a little W curve and then just linking them up at the bottom there. To link the back of the foot up to the body now, we're just going to bring a line up and add a little bit of waviness to it like this for the back of the ankle there. Now to add the sort of scaly texture on top of the foot, you're just going to do these little curves. So starting at the front of the first toe here, adding in these little curve shapes and they're going to get wider as they approach the ankle and wider up the leg there. And you're going to do that for each of the toes, just adding in these little curves. And that's basically it for the sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to some watercolor paper using a light pad. If you don't have a light pad, go ahead and tape your design up to a glass window, let the light shine through and trace through there, or turn your iPhone torch on, stick it under a glass table and use that as a makeshift light pad. And I will go ahead and line this one now and I'll see you in the next part. Okay, now that we've transferred our illustration over to some watercolor paper, we are ready to paint. If you've transferred this to marker paper or some sort of pencil paper medium, you can go ahead and get your favorite painting medium. We're using our Liquitex acrylic inks as always. And I've preloaded my palette. I've got carbon black. I've got a mid gray wash, which is just carbon black with some water uh, mixed in with it. I've got a orange yellow, I have some deep turquoise, dioxazine purple, and vivid red orange. You can use whatever color combination you'd like and substitute any of these colors. So these are the colors we're gonna be using. I've got two brushes, one for putting the ink down and one for blending. And I've also got a glass of water for washing the brushes out. So as always, we are starting with our black shading first. So just coming in onto this front claw, it's gonna be underneath the body somewhat and it is coming back to the underside of the belly there. So we're going to add a little bit of black just coming down from the top there. And using our blending brush just to bring down a nice gray value. Blending that black down through to gray and through to white. Now there's actually not going to be a lot of black shading on this one, just a little bit. We're mostly going to go for really vibrant 
vibrant colors on this one. So we're just putting a little bit of black shading where I think that we will need it. And we're gonna do a little bit of black shading in some of those feathers. So the first row of feathers that comes off from the spine there, we're going to use carbon black in painting those. And you're basically gonna paint these the same way that you do koi fish scales or dragon scales in that you're going to paint them solid and leave a small white gap around the parameter of your color that you're doing. So I'm just painting these in solid black and leaving that little gap of white around it. Once you've done this, you'll wash out your brush, go across to your mid gray tone, so your mid gray wash, and you're basically gonna come along and do the next row of scales in that mid gray using the exact same pattern that we did, leaving that little white gap, but just coming around with a mid gray to do your uh, feathers, sorry, not scales, feathers. But they're very, very similar to scales in the way that you draw them and shade them. So we're just coming in and doing a mid gray wash for your next row of feathers in the exact same way that we did the black. Once you've done this, you can wash your brush out and then we're gonna go into a little bit of turquoise. And you're gonna use the turquoise to go over the top of your gray. So the gray that you just put down, you're gonna go straight over the top of it using your turquoise color. This is going to darken it once it dries and it'll have a slightly different look to the next row which is gonna be plain turquoise. Now these are transparent uh, acrylic inks which means that the underlay color is gonna give it a slightly darker value. And the next row is gonna have white underneath it instead of gray. So it's gonna have a lighter value to it. This is what's gonna provide us with that smooth transition between having the solid black feathers up through the sort of darker turquoise tones and into something slightly lighter. So just coming in over the top of all of your gray feathers now. Once you've done all of the sections over the top of your greys, you can go ahead and take turquoise and paint in the rest of your body feathers using plain turquoise. It's gonna go over the top of the white paper and it's going to leave it looking a lot brighter than the ones that we've desaturated with the gray underneath it. So this is gonna have a nice uh, tonal value to it. So just going over the top of your plain white feathers now still leaving that little white gap of paper around the edge of each feather and you're just going in with your plain turquoise or whatever color you've decided to make the primary body color if you're doing this in red or gold or orange green whatever color you'd like the techniques are going to be exactly the same and you can transfer this same shading technique to if you're doing koi fish dragons snakes anything with scales or you know, overlapping feathers like this, you can go ahead and transfer the same painting techniques to those subject matters. All right, once you've done all of the main feathers on the body there, we're looking really good. We're gonna go ahead and take a bit of turquoise onto the face of the bird and do a little bit of blending. So we're gonna come from the very front of the head, leaving a little bit of a white border, just coming around the eye. And as we get to those feathers at the back of the head there, we take our blending brush with a bit of water and just blend that turquoise back a little bit same thing underneath the eye just coming around like this blending it back and underneath the chin will be the same just bringing that turquoise back under and blending it back into those sort of soft feathery areas underneath the chin there Okay, now we're also gonna bring a little bit of this turquoise down through the wings. So just load your brush up a little bit more and come from the top of the wing here and just come down like this and around. And then with your blending brush, we're just gonna blend that forward to the softer feathers at the sort of fold of the wing there. So just bringing out that nice, beautiful, vibrant color and just bringing that color around to the tip of the uh, that part of the wing, of the soft feather part of the wing. Just bringing it around and blending it forward. All right, so from here, I've just washed my brush out and I'm going into some of my yellow orange color. We're gonna use that for a fair bit on our bird here. So we're gonna start by doing the beak. 
and I'm just doing the beak solid yellow. There's no blending or shading involved in this. I just want to do a nice solid yellow beak. So just coming in like that. I'm going to do the spinal feathers on the back with the yellow. And I want to try and leave a little white gap around the parameter of these the same way that we did the rest of the body feathers there. You're going to use that yellow to do the plating on the front of the feet here. For these larger areas, I'll leave those white gaps around the, uh, the edges of those big scaly plates. And then as we get down into the toe area, you can start to just work that over the top of these plates here. Not stressing out too much about getting those gaps. On the other foot, you can of course just bring it straight down over the top of your scaly bits. Okay, coming into these soft feathers just underneath the back of the body here. We're going to use our yellow for that as well. Just lay in a bit of the yellow and blend it out into those soft feathers. Gives it a nice light sort of fluffy look to it. You can do that for all of the real soft areas of feathering underneath the belly area here. Okay, I'm also going to do the center vein of all of my tail feathers using our orange yellow color. So just all of these small tail feathers and then even the long fancy sort of showy offy feathers. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of yellow to that center vein. From here, I also want to add a little bit of yellow to the inside uh, ring of all of my large feathers. Okay, once you've done this, I've just washed my brush out and I'm going into the vivid red orange. Again, you could use pyrrole red or just about any other red you'd like. And we're going to do the little crest in this color. So just coming in, painting in a little crest on top of his head. And I'm going to blend that back towards the back of the crest where there's you know a bit more sort of soft fluffy feathering to it towards the back there and we're also going to use this to do the sort of scaling plates on the bottom of the neck here so you're going to carefully paint these in the same way that you would do snake belly or dragon belly once again just leaving that little white uh, edge on there it is time consuming and it is difficult it's not an easy thing to do. It takes a fair bit of patience and a steady hand, but I'll tell you now it is worth the effort. Whilst it's time consuming, it does make the whole image look a lot nicer when it's finished. It gives everything a bit more breathing space and opens everything up a little bit more, making it more readable. And ultimately it just looks a lot nicer. Okay, I'm also gonna take a little bit of the vivid red orange up the back of our feet here, at the very back of the claw, just coming down. And then I want to blend it through with some water to lighten it to more of a peachy sort of pink tone for the actual padding on the feet. So in the darker areas, you can use your vivid red orange and then just blend that out into your sort of lighter areas so that it's more of a peachy pink tone. This will give it that sort of fleshy uh, padded look that we have on the bottom of our bird's feet here. We're going into the sort of largest feathers at the ends here with our vivid red orange. Just coming in from the base of those feathers. Leaving a white border around the edge of the feather. Just like we do with a lot of the different components of this. And coming right up to where the tip is and curving it off at the end there. I'm also going to go ahead and use this same vivid red orange to do the smaller sort of tail feathers at the front here. And we're just gonna do that by coming up one side with vivid red orange like this. I'll turn my page and just blend that out towards the softer areas of that feather. Okay, coming up the other side, vivid red orange. and then blending it up and outwards into the rest of the feather there. And you're gonna do that for all of these small tail feathers. Okay, once you've done these smaller uh, tail feathers using the vivid red orange, we're just gonna do some of the larger areas of the tail feathers too by coming in from the top with our vivid red orange. You can then take your blending brush 
and blend that color back and down the feather. Just like this. And we can blend another color up and through there in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do vivid red orange for the ends of the large feathers. Like I said, you don't have to do all of them like this. This is just the way that I'm doing it today. But I'm gonna go ahead and use that vivid red orange for the ends of all these feathers. Okay, once you've done this, you can wash your brush out and we're gonna go straight into our dioxazine purple now. This is a pretty dark purple color and we're gonna start by doing the smallest feathers in the wings here, which are the little scale feathers. So just coming in and doing those with your dioxazine purple. It is gonna be very, very dark, but it will provide really nice contrast with the rest of our colors here. So I also wanna use this dioxazine purple for the first row of uh, small feathers on the wings, the sort of secondary feathers here. So just bringing it down, making sure to leave a little white border around each of the feathers and just bringing this really deep sort of purple tone into the wings. Okay, now we're gonna use the dioxazine purple for two more parts. We're gonna do the very small uh, feathers between the larger feathers here, the sort of juvenile feathers. And we're just gonna come into the base of those with the purple and then use some water to blend that purple out towards the end. We're not doing anything fancy. We're not mixing or blending multiple colors. I just want to blend these through with a nice sort of smooth transition from a dark purple through to like a light violet purple. So just starting at the base with your darkest purple there. Solid dioxazine purple and then blending it up towards the tip using your blending brush and some water to get it to blend through to a nice violet sort of tone. And we're just going to do that second uh, sort of area, that second loop in dioxazine purple. And that's going to, again, strengthen it and give it a bit of a dark tone. All right, once you've done your dioxazine purple, you're going to wash your brush out, go back into your yellow orange color, and you're going to go ahead and do the next row of your wing feathers using that yellow orange tone. And that's going to give it a nice warm and vibrant feeling to the end of your wings there. And the very last thing you're gonna use your yellow orange for is to do some blending in the tail. So like I said, we're gonna blend into those areas of orange that we did, that vivid red orange, by coming from the bottom using your yellow and just blending straight up into your vivid red orange there. You've already done the sort of blending work using the vivid red orange. So you can actually go straight up into it using your orange yellow and it will blend straight in. You don't need to do any additional blending with water, any additional spit shading. You can just blend straight on up and it's gonna blend really nicely into that yellow orange. It makes the tails look super vibrant and it gives it that really sort of warm, fiery sort of look to it. So it gives, gives off that same effect uh, while still having some nice sort of turquoise and purple tones in there. And I'd like you guys to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what your favorite Japanese characters are from Japanese folklore, maybe an anime that you like, or any style of Japanese artwork. Just let me know in the comment section down below. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you give it a go, and I hope you learned something. That having been said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep drawing, keep painting. I'll see you later. Bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.